Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. I want to say hi to all my new subscribers. We're almost at a thousand. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's right there. Just touch my icon, subscribe, it's free. We are working more on this yard bug, and I've already filmed and been at this for hours because I messed up. I was replacing the belts, the drive belts. I drove this thing around the yard, and it drove slower than hell. So I took the belts off the other day, and I screwed up. I wasn't paying attention to where I hung the new belts. That was a belt off of apparently something else, and I replaced it with a new one at $20.00. And it's a waste of money until I find something it fits later because it does not go on here. What we have on the yard bug are two different drive belts. And they are both the same size. They are 5 8 by 36 inches. So if you need a part number, there you go. 5 8 by 36 is the length. That's really all you need to know. Uh, I think that's a well I got that from the local parts dealer and what I was supposed to do was get two of those and instead I got one the wrong belt from something else so it took me two hours of watching YouTube videos to find out that there were only a couple of videos people actually made and they were completely worthless so if you are one of those people that made a video about putting dry belts on this yard bug you wasted a half hour of my life, 10 minutes at a time, from three different people. You showed taking off pulleys you didn't need to take off. Uh, you showed bad angles, so screw you guys. <laughs> anyway, so I'm glad that I screwed up now, because now you can see two separate colors. In order to get these belts off, you must remove your engine pulley. There's a bolt up in the middle there. You take that out and this slides off. I had to use a torch, heat it up, cool it off with water, then use a vibrating uh, air hammer to vibrate it off while keeping pressure on it and working it off because it was rusted on. You may have to do that too. Other than that, as soon as you take this, belt, this pulley off, you can see that the belt, the main belt, this would be the upper belt, goes around your top of your engine pulley it comes over the top of this idler pulley goes back down around the bottom of this V pulley goes back up this is your variable speed drive pulley and as you can see there's an upper and a lower so we're still following the blue belt that comes off of the main engine pulley goes over your black idler around the bottom of the V pulley and it goes around the top, the top section of your idler, your variable speed. And then it simply goes behind the transmission. It's taller than that. And, and it finishes off by coming back around the engine. That's it. Okay, that's how you feed the first one. Now the second one's even easier than that. There's a transmission pulley here. I can't really point to it and show it to you. It's right there. So the belt goes around that big transmission pulley and it just feeds right over the top. There's no impediments at all. Slide it over the top of that pulley, work it back onto that pulley. This is your spring loaded pulley. That's the one that goes on last. So if you feed that over the transmission pulley, come right back down to the bottom side of your variable speed pulley, it'll fit on there. Then all you have to do is push this down with your hand see it goes up and down and feed your belt back over the top of that that's it it took me two hours of searching online i could not find a diagram from cub cadet from yard man from nobody there's no diagrams that you can read and nobody made a video worth a damn that's how you put the drive belts back on that's where they go that's all your pulleys under there these guys are pulling idler pulleys off. They're removing your variable speed pulley. They're doing all kinds of crap under here you don't need to do. Flip the mower up on its side. Put it up on a chair. Put the steering wheel on a chair so it doesn't roll completely over upside down. Take this spring. Pull it down. Belt comes off. It comes off of here. comes off the transmission. You put that one on second. Then you just take the first one. 
feed it around like I said right back around to itself put this back on you, you cannot get this belt out of there without taking this off it's impossible don't even try it you'll spend three hours trying to figure it out get this pulley off the belt will come with it the rest of this all just feeds right through all by itself there's your guide right there everything else is gonna fit that's it we're gonna take this thing for a ride okay this is a final video on this yard bug now remember guys this is going into service for me with my little lawn service uh, the reason I like this machine is because it's only 27 inch cut the deck is only 27 inches wide it doesn't stick out it's a nice cute little rider and you can get it through most people's fences plus because I have my machines uh, I don't drive I have my machine set up in three different places in my town uh, one on the south side one here and then one on the north side so I keep my equipment in three different places my zero turn will stay here to do the lawns that I have right here on these few streets and this will go down to the south side where it's fairly safe but if it gets stolen it doesn't matter I got this machine absolutely free and the cost so far has been a battery and a $17 belt for the drive system but there's been some modifications that I did if you watched well you've been it's on this video so before when I would push one pedal they all would move okay now we don't have that issue now when you push one the others don't move what happens is or what I did see if I can get down there <laughs> I love this part take this off of there okay so what you have down here is a pin I don't know if you can yeah okay you have a pin and a washer and there's a bar that goes through here this is the frame clear across the front and on the other side you have a pin as well and what had happened was this thing had it's a big thick three-quarter inch bar that goes through the frame and the pedals uh, go onto the bar the bar goes through the middle of the pedals and there's three of them and then they had these plastic or Teflon sort of uh, slug that fit over the bar to keep the pedals from basically wobbling a little you see they wobble now because when you buy something new from the store you want everything to be precision and there's no way people would want to put their foot on a pedal and go the pedals wobbly it feels like it's gonna break but if you ever have to do this you'll find out it's a solid steel bar three quarters of an inch is thick and that the pedals themselves are all solid steel so it took me a good two hours of beating it from one side I took the washer and the pin off of both sides and I put a, a beater bar on this side and beat it about an inch and then the pedals over here were moving with it so I had to beat those back and I had to keep working it until I got it to come out one side and I beat it so much that the end of the rod had mushroomed so it wouldn't go through any of the holes and I had to take my grinder and smooth it back out then beat it some more and smooth it back out it was a pain in the ass and what it was was there was rust on that stupid bar and those plastic Teflon spacers which were like two inches wide they were just dragging on everything and crushing on everything so what I ended up doing was taking a torch literally melting those plastic sleeves out of there i held it on there for a good five minutes and i watched the shit just drip out until i could get the bar out then i cleaned up the bar and cleaned up the mushroom dens and then everything just slid back together and there's the tiniest bit of play in there but now all the pedals work individually this is your blade engagement i can turn the blade on lock it in place so that it holds and then when you're ready, you just do like that. I'm not sitting on it, so, and it comes back. And then your gas pedal, now I don't care about the brake, but before, 
when I would push on the gas pedal, it would want to stay up there. Now, because it's loose, the way it's supposed to be, the spring pulls it right back, and that acts as a brake. So I fixed that. You saw this before. These are the makeshift transmission cables that I put on there. This is a two cable system. You pull it one way and it pulls this cable out to put it in reverse. And you push it the other way and it pulls that one out to put it in neutral and forward. So for me, that's how that's going to stay. I just fed those up through that hole and they just kind of fit there. The other thing that I did, and I do not recommend this to anyone. This is my personal machine. Um, I am not an idiot. I'm not going to take this thing on a hill and flip it over. Uh, you know, use a little common sense. There were three safety switches on this damn thing. The most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Three safety switches on a machine that's as small as my arm. Uh, anyway, there's one on the transmission that I can't show you. Because it's up underneath of the wheel. And for some reason, if it wasn't in neutral, the stupid thing wouldn't start. So you couldn't start it if it was in gear, forward and reverse. So I took that and I unplugged it. And then I couldn't start the machine. There was one on the blade pedal here. That's this pedal. So if the blades were disengaged, it pressed in the switch and it would work fine. And then there was one on the brake. So if the brake wasn't pressed, if one of these pedals was in the wrong position or you were trying to start this thing in gear because it's a pain in the butt pulling those cables, trying to figure out how to get it in forward or reverse, it wouldn't work. And I filmed some of that and it was getting to be a pain in the butt. So all I did was take here on the harness. There was a set of wires off of the harness that went up to those two switches in the front and then another one that came all the way back here to the switch that was on the back on the transmission. I undid all those wires, found all the safety switch wires, removed them, removed the safety switch and literally left the four main wires. There's two red wires, one is constant power, one is power that goes to the solenoid to click it over, one is a return charge to the battery and one is a ground to shut it off. I cut everything else out of this whole damn mower completely. Now it will start, it will cut. I cut my grass, I don't know if you could tell, but it was getting pretty tall. Uh, it was getting tall. I can't see the camera. It was getting tall. And I went ahead and cut the grass with this. Now, I put the deck back on. If anybody wants to see a video of me removing the deck, putting it back on. I didn't film it because I took this off like a year ago. And I don't see too many of these. So it took me a while of playing with everything to figure out that there's two springs right there that go to the deck. Pivot point. There's two springs. It connects here with pins and then in the front it's got a, a basically a long bolt that goes through and then those two springs go on so that the deck will come up and down the whole belt is simple it goes around your deck spindle it goes around the motor and all that does right there when you push the pedal is it just pushes that in and makes it tight that's it uh, that's the original belt and it seems to be working so I'm going to replace that belt at some point um, but everything else is fine so the next thing I need to do is put a small hitch back here which I'm going to weld right to that uh, basically all that's going to do I've got carts I've got trailers like this and I've got full garden carts that have my lawnmower my push mower my weed eaters and all that and I just use a pin system. So all I have to do is put a small uh, L-shaped piece of steel back there with a hole in it so that I can connect any of my trailers to it. And then I can carry extra fuel, my weed eaters on the racks, on the trailers, all that good stuff. And basically I drive this around the neighborhoods. I ride my bike to the neighborhoods, 
Then I drive the tractor around with the trailer on the back of the tractor, do four or five houses, drive it back, park it all, ride my bike home. It's a pain in the butt when you don't have a license, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, so there you go. This thing is completely functional now. And at some point I'll spend the 30 or 40 bucks and buy the transmission cables. They just clip on down here, follow the body up, and they go on a little lever, which I left in place. It's just under there. It fell down. So when I pull this back off, I can lift it back up, put it in place, tighten it down, put the cables back on. But that's it. This thing is ready to rock and roll. Um, I might as well fire it up and show you that it works. Everything on its turnkey now. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for taking a look. If you have any questions, this is going to be my personal machine. I love this little thing. I love the look of it. So let me know if you need anything. Other than that that I want to do is I realized that while I already replaced the tire on this side and I have a brand new one for that side I left the old one on and the inside of the tire rim where the axle goes through is kind of elongated so I'm probably gonna swap that out and put the other new one that I bought even though it doesn't match I might as well uh, it fits well so I'm going to end up putting that new tire back on there just so it fits the rim better where the axle goes through. Other than that, the hitch goes on the back. Uh, probably put a cup holder on the front just because and uh, make sure the tires stay aired up. But that's it for the little yard bug. I got it for free. I spent 16 bucks on a belt. Uh, I will eventually buy the other two belts, the deck belt and the other drive belt. So I'll have about 50 bucks into this thing. I'm using my motorcycle battery right now, so it'll be another 30 bucks for battery. And I think that tire was, I think that tire at Harbor Freight was like 18 bucks or something. So, you know, I have 60 or 70 bucks into this thing and... I don't know a few hours of my time cutting out the bullshit going through the systems half of it remember was me I took it apart so long ago the deck's been off of it for over a year uh, trying to remember how to put everything back together pulling out all the wiring from the safety switches and the bullshit that it doesn't need so that I can use this thing whenever I need to so I hope you enjoyed watching if you didn't, check out some of my other videos. They might be better for you. Uh, if you want me to do any specific projects, let me know. These machines were brought to me a few days ago. There's a Toro self-propelled and a Troy built. Another Troy built here. Uh, there's another Riggs. I think that's a Hyper. And a commercial pressure washer. So these are the videos that I'm going to be making over the course of the next few days I have no idea what's wrong with them I have no idea anything about them they were brought to me and I get them from scrappers and stuff like that I pay a couple bucks for them usually like ten dollars and uh, we're gonna find out what's going on with them if they run if they're worth a damn 
Uh, all three of those are self-propelled and I have no idea what's going on with the pressure washer. So look forward to those videos coming soon. Thanks for stopping by. See you soon.